Good morning. Good morning. And happy Thanksgiving to all of you. It's wonderful to have you here. We join together today in our uh, Thanksgiving Day service on this National Day of Thanksgiving gathering to recognize not only the uh, blessings uh, that come from people in our lives, but ultimately the blessings that come uh, from God through them. We will be using the order of service that's printed in uh, the bulletin. We have the distinct privilege of having uh, Pastor Paul Schneider with us today, the pastor at Holy Scripture Lutheran Church in Midland, a fellow ELS congregation. He'll be preaching the sermon today for us, so we thank him for uh, coming and sharing God's word with us. We begin with the opening hymn, Come, You Thankful People, Come. stand. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The sea is his, for he made it. O come, let us worship and bow down. For he is our God. And we are the of the of his 
Our Lord wants us to walk in love as his dearly treasured children, to follow the example of Christ's selfless, sacrificial offering. But all too often, we have chosen the ways of selfishness and ingratitude. We have chosen the unfruitful works of darkness instead of the fruit of light. Enable us by your spirit, O Lord, to acknowledge our waywardness, to look carefully at our actions and discern what is good, right, true, and pleasing to you. Raise us up, renewed to walk as children of light who make best use of the gifts you have given. Give thanks, for Christ forgives you and frees you. He banishes your darkness and shines the light of his grace upon you. Rise up, renewed by his spirit, to encourage one another in word and deed. Let us give constant thanks for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us serve each other out of reverence for Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father of life, when we survey this world you made and sustain in love, what more can we do than stand in wonder and receive your gifts with gratitude? As we behold the grace you lavish upon us through Jesus, your Son, and by your Spirit bring forth fruits of faith, so inspire us anew to serve you in humble trust and thankful praise. Lead us to live out our callings and use your gifts so that others may glorify you with us and that together we may all give thanks to you, your Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The scripture lessons for our Thanksgiving festival record God's blessings of love to his people in all times, material blessings and spiritual blessings. They also highlight the response in us when we, through faith in Christ, recognize God's goodness and give him thanks with our hearts, with our lips, and with our lives. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8. Moses speaks these words to the Israelites as they are about to enter the promised land. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full. And you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest, when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, 
who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware, lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. And if you forget the Lord your God, and go after other gods and serve them and worship them. I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. We join together in singing the next hymn, Let All Things Now Living. The epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel lesson for this Thanksgiving festival is taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. 
Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel. You may be seated for the next hymn. We join together in singing, Sing to the Lord of Harvest. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Before I read the sermon text, I want to take a minute to have a personal greeting and thank you on this Thanksgiving Day because after we in Midland had experienced the flood, we've had so much outpouring of love and generosity, prayers and gifts, and St. John's and Frankenmuth took up an offering, and many of the gifts were anonymous, and so all I could do was send a thank you note to the entire congregation. But to each and every one of you, I want to assure you that your love and your thoughtfulness and your prayers and your generosity have been a method or have given me good reason in order to give thanks to God. So thank you very much. It is my privilege to be here. In fact, 
I think we're starting a tradition because this is my third Thanksgiving day here preaching from this pulpit. Two years ago, Pastor Luplo was quite busy and I offered to come and take the service because we have Wednesday night service in Midland and he could go and be with his family up in the UP. Last year, of course, you didn't have a full-time pastor. It was a vacancy. And today, I'm here because I offered, because of the new year of a new student and an expecting a baby, and I thought, give him a break. And uh, so I'm here. Thank you. It's my privilege. And I'm going to share with you a text from the book of Acts. And as is printed in the bulletin, my theme is Thanksgiving on a sinking ship. Thanksgiving on a sinking ship. I want to start by really stating the fact that this is not going to be a negative sermon. I'm not depressed. I'm not discouraged. I'm not claiming that we're all going to sink and drown. That's not the point. But you know, we live in a world with all the pressures that can lead us to believe we're on a sinking ship. And there are three P's that I would like to begin to share with you that will give us that feeling that we might be sinking. The first P is the pandemic. Masks being worn, quarantines, all of the issues that were going on for these many months. It can be depressing. It can be fearful. It can give us the impression we're on a sinking ship. The second P is politics. And don't get nervous. I'm not going to preach politics. But you know that our country is divided. And there are many people in this world because of the election. Are we on a sinking ship? The third P is personal. We all have personal issues. I've experienced them with my wife's cancer and other health issues, the flood, all of the other pressures that are probably known only to me and God. And you have the same thing. I know that I have members that are celebrating Thanksgiving today without some family members coming because they are afraid to have more than two or three in the house. And that's a real heartbreak for some of these parents, obviously. So again, personal problems, health issues, they can all be there. I should add that last night, Pastor Ernst was there to do the liturgy, and when he spoke a few personal words at the end of the service, he was thankful that the fourth P wasn't Pastor Patrick causing pressure, pressures. Yeah, so with that in mind, it's a positive. And let's keep in mind that I'm going to tell you what's going to happen at the end. And that is we're all going to go to heaven. Our ship might sink, but we're going to stay afloat. We're going to be rescued because God has a place all prepared for us in heaven. And our closing hymn, as maybe some of you know and realize, was written by a man by the name of Martin Rinkert, lived during the Thirty Years' War in Germany. And there was a plague there. There was a pandemic. And we are told that in the city or surrounding probably 5,000 people died. He ended up being, from what I've read, the only pastor in that city. And he was conducting 40 to 50 sermons every day. 40 to 50 sermons every day. One of them was his wife who died. And in spite of all that, now thank we all our God. And keep that in mind as we close this service and sing that hymn. So now let's get to our text. Thanksgiving on a sinking ship. We read from the book of Acts, chapter 27, 
Just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food for themselves. Altogether, there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. Thanksgiving on a sinking ship. Consider past blessings. We know that God has been so gracious to us, have we not? You think back and you lost a very dedicated, faithful pastor. You were vacant and there were weeks and sometimes months where you were wondering what's going to happen. You had finally gotten word a pastor was coming last year when I preached here, but who is he? What's he going to be like? Hmm? Even then, you had services conducted, whether it was a guest pastor or whether it was your lay leaders that conducted the services. God did not forsake you, did he? Services continued. God's word was preached. The sacrament was administered. And what a blessing that is. Our church last Thanksgiving was celebrating 50 years of God's grace. The church was in pristine order. It was just wonderful. And I was thinking if and when the day comes when I die or retire, whichever comes first, whoever comes in there is going to have a beautiful structure in which to serve. And now it's all destroyed. The building, but not the people. And yet God's grace continues. And there hasn't been a Sunday since the flood that I haven't stood in the pulpit to conduct a service, either live stream or whatever. Only one Sunday, only one Sunday, when I, my wife was in the emergency room, by the way, because of a problem, and I got into the pulpit, the church was empty because of the pandemic, and as I started the service, my son-in-law running the live stream said, our internet isn't working. So we had no internet. So that was only the Sunday that I didn't preach a sermon. But it was a positive for me as well, because you know what happened? I got back and got my wife out of the emergency room. It wasn't as serious as we thought. And I had time to drive over to Saginaw and listen to the last half of Pastor Mosley's retirement sermon, the end of June. So blessings continue to come, don't they? And what is important when it comes to our church service? Whether you're sitting in wonderful, comfortable pews, or like at our church, we have hard metal chairs right now. It's the gospel that's preached, is it not? There's a church up in the Thumb, Wisconsin Synod Church, that is closing and a month or so ago, I received a phone call from one of the elders. He had heard about our flood, and he said, we're looking to donate our pews and altar to some church that could use it. I told him that we were already having ours replenished and so forth, but I said, I can talk to our synod president, and we can uh, maybe find a place for that. I said, how many pews are there? He laughed, and he says, I was afraid you were going to ask me that. I'm 75 years old, he says, and I've sat in that church every Sunday. And I can't even tell you how many pews. I immediately told him, I'm impressed with that, because that means that when you sat in the pews, you were listening to the sermons and not counting the pews. So don't you start counting pews now, by the way. Point is, give thanks to God for all the past blessings that he gives us. They are just so wonderful and we can't even count them all. And no matter what our circumstances, no matter what storm we face, the apostle was 
on a ship going to Rome. And in the Mediterranean Sea, they had a storm of hurricane force. And for, we're told, two weeks, they were just bobbing like a cork in a storm. Couldn't control the ship. They had the anchors out. They had to tie ropes around to keep the ship together. They all thought they were going to die. But God kept them safe. And eventually, of course, brought them to dry land. No matter what the storm, think of the past blessings. There has not been one second in your life where God has forsaken you. And he continues to bless you so richly. And so often we aren't even aware of those blessings, are we? A pastor once received a call from one of his members requesting a special prayer of thanksgiving that Sunday because he said, I was in a car accident. My car was totally admoni or, uh, totally collided. I can't even think of the word here. But anyway, it was destroyed. It was totaled out. And I walked away without a scratch. Please offer a prayer of thanksgiving for my protection, which the pastor gladly did. He also added a petition, giving thanks to God for all the other members who have traveled safely in their cars or planes and whatever without any incident whatsoever. Sometimes you might have a close call, and boy, was I ever fortunate. I like that word better than lucky. And God sends his holy angels, does he not? And I'm sure the way some of you might drive, he has them working overtime. But God does protect us, doesn't he? And we need to thank him. Thank him for past blessings. Thank him for present blessings. Because the blessings continue. They're new every morning, are they not? What a wonderful gift that God gives us. I'm sure that when you think about the food that was served on that sinking ship, it probably wasn't very tasty. God gave nourishment. Talks about the bread that he broke when he gave thanks. And what kind of bread was it? Was it moldy? Was it water sog? Didn't probably have a toaster to put it in or jam and jelly. Was there any other food? We are not told, but in the midst of that storm with the threat of disaster with only the promise that they would be rescued they all gave thanks and had a thanksgiving meal I'm sure that all of you have some plans of some nature and when you sit at that table and you look at all the blessings that God has given probably what you will do after you've eaten is Complain a little bit, boy, I think I ate too much. I almost feel uncomfortable. Let's save the dessert for later, so forth. Hmm? How richly we have been blessed. So we need to give thanks. And it's easy for us, is it not, even then to sit and say, Lord, thank you for this gift. But as we consider that gift, let's never forget the greatest gift. The gift of our Savior. Traditionally, in our Lutheran circles, as far as where I'm concerned, Thanksgiving Day, it's a national day of Thanksgiving, and we want to emphasize the material blessings. But let's never forget the spiritual blessings. We have the bread and all the other trimmings that we have at the Thanksgiving dinner, but the meal you're receiving here, the bread of life, the wonderful, wonderful truth that God has provided us sinners with a Savior, that's the greatest gift, isn't it? Think of that. No matter what our physical circumstances may be, people might be concerned about what's going to happen in our country with the economy and government. Remember, God is still in control. And we can thank him for every blessing that he gives us but again remember the greatest gift the greatest blessing is our Savior Jesus Christ it won't be long and we're going to be celebrating Christmas 
Jesus came into this world, didn't he? Born of the Virgin Mary. Came here to live a perfect life for us. To keep every one of those commandments that we break in thought, word, and deed. Lived under the law. And then allowed himself to be captured and crucified and take our place in hell forsaken by the Heavenly Father. But he didn't stay dead, rose again on the third day, and that resurrection assures us that we have a Savior. As the Catechism teaches us, Jesus is the Son of God. His doctrine is true. He made full satisfaction for all of our sins. We too shall live. And he gives us strength to live each and every day to give him the thanks and praise that we, he so rightfully deserves. What a blessing. Thank God every day for what he gives us. But don't forget to also thank him for future blessings. The apostle was instructed that none of them would perish. They would all be saved all 276. But when they had that Thanksgiving meal, they didn't know that. The storm was still there. The ship was still heading for that shore that was going to break it apart, but they would all be rescued. But they didn't know that. It was a matter of faith. And I don't know what was in their heart, but we are on that ship that's being tossed about in the storms of life. And who knows if that ship might not stay floating, but even if it doesn't, God is still going to rescue us. Is he not? Not one hair on their head, we're told. The apostle wrote <clears throat> to the Philippians and said, do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication, petitions, with thanksgiving, present your requests before God. It's so easy to miss in that passage the invitation of thanksgiving in advance. We don't have to worry. Oh, we do, but we don't have to. God says, I take care of you. And he does. But when we pray, we can pray with the confidence of knowing in advance that it's going to happen according to God's will and to our best interest. And so we can thank him for that in advance. And that's exactly what we want to do as we go forward in our lives. God is in control. He will not forsake us. And isn't that cause for us to give thanks even if it appears that we have problems that are causing our ship to fail? Think about that for a moment. And what a blessing that is. What a comfort that is. And when we think about what the scriptures have told us, I'd like to share with you what the apostle wrote in 2 Corinthians. He says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired even of life. They were on a sinking ship, it would appear. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. Rely on God. God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope, and he will continue to deliver us as you keep us in your prayers. Then may many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Now this is our boast. No matter what your circumstance, your situation, no matter how much the storm is bouncing around your ship of life and threatening 
a disaster, a sinking ship, God will take care of you. God will bless you, and he gives us the strength. Another passage, and I might add that uh, it was very much appreciated because a number of weeks ago, your pastor sent me an email knowing all the struggles that I was going through in Midland and these words that he shared with me from Corinthians certainly were a reminder and a comfort and a blessing to me. He says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. The passengers on that ship, all 276, were rescued. They were welcomed. They were provided for by God's grace. And that calamity brought a blessing not only to those individuals on the ship, but to those inhabitants of that island. God used it for his good and for his blessing. Never forget, no matter what happens, God is in control. God will keep us afloat in the day he wants that ship to sink. We'll be in heaven. That's what it's all about. I can think of no better way to end this sermon than to invite you to join the hymn, Jesus Savior, pilot me, you may remain seated. Please join in singing.
Please stand for prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, you made all things good and beautiful. You have arranged the orderly procession of day and night for our work and rest. You let the seasons run in their cycle so we can have all we need for our bodies and lives. You sent your son to pay for our sins on the cross and pave the way to heaven in his resurrection. You give the gospel and word and sacraments to bring us full reconciliation with you. We give you thanks for the homes that shelter us, the clothing that protects us, and for our daily bread. We give you thanks for those who have worked hard to grow and bring in this year's harvest. We give you thanks for providing the harvest. We give you thanks for our work and for the strength to do it well. We give you thanks for those who do difficult and dangerous work on our behalf. We give you thanks for those who care for the sick and the dying especially in this time when COVID-19 threatens the health of so many. We give you thanks for the new life we have as your forgiven and loved children and for the fellowship we enjoy in your son's body, the church. We give you thanks for the suffering you have allowed to come into our lives, for we know you only give your children what serves their eternal good. Even as we recognize that our faith is refined through suffering, we give you thanks for upholding us through all the trials of this past year. Even when our faith, hope, and love are weak, your Son, Jesus Christ, provides what we lack, strengthening, comforting, and uplifting us. We give you thanks for our thankfulness to you, which is worked in us by your Holy Spirit. Make us always thankful for your gifts, whether they are special or commonplace, whether they come wrapped in joy or in tears. We give you thanks, O Lord, for you are good. Your mercy endures forever. We give you thanks through Christ, your Son, our Lord, and we join together in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
Again, a welcome and God's blessings to all of you on this Thanksgiving Day. A special welcome to any guests or visitors with us today. Uh, if you'd like any more information about our church, uh, feel free to see the kiosk in the gathering space. Otherwise, you can talk to me. Uh, we'd also like to uh, welcome those who are uh, watching this video uh, from afar. God's richest blessings to you this Thanksgiving. Um, I'd like to thank Kate for playing organ today, also for the elders and uh, ushers this morning. We appreciate their work, um, as well as our TV crew to record the service. Finally, a special thank you to Pastor Schneider for being here uh, with us um, to share with us the, uh, uh, the word of God that gives us the peace of the gospel and also uh, works true thankfulness in our hearts. Thank you very much. Until we meet again, God's peace. Oh, there's an announcement. Yeah, uh, while Pastor and I request the help of all able-bodied people to carry out the manger scene from the basement of the church, so stick around, we need your help, thank you. A blessed Thanksgiving to you all. <laughs>